Hello and welcome back to the channel and another video. It's been a little while and uh, as you can see I'm not wandering around the garage and there's a reason for that. Uh, there's been a lot of changes uh, back here at the homestead, at the garage. And so I thought, well, I'll introduce you in the house and then take you through and show you what's going on. So, yeah, here we go. So welcome in to the garage. As you can see, no, we haven't been burgled. Uh, there, there are no cars in here. So the reason there are no cars in here is because, uh, well, we've sold them all. Uh, so the Mark One Golf is gone. That went uh, to a guy pretty locally. He seems quite happy with that. Um, we're quite happy to move it on and move on to something else. And the Fiat 500 is gone. So that is uh, also gone to somebody relatively local. And that's going to be his daughter's first car. So that's great to hear, to be honest. Just to recap, Mark 1 Golf is gone. The Fiat 500 is gone. My daily Golf is also gone. And so at the moment we only have a couple of electric cars that's not quite true because i have uh, been on copart again and uh, i've got the next project so without further ado let's open the garage door up and i can show you what we bought here we go so this is the next project on the channel it is a 2017 Renault Capture. I don't know a heck of a lot about these, but apparently it's a subcompact SUV, whatever that means. It's 900cc turbo, which means it's got 89 brake horsepower and probably about three foot pounds of torque. Nevertheless, it runs, it drives, it's cat in, and uh, as you can see, it's missing one eye. So <laughs> clearly something has gone on. I wonder if you guys, based on the damage pattern, want to hazard a guess as to what happened to this. All right, you can see there's not a lot of big, big impact, but it's weird impact. There's impact on the top of the bonnet. The headlight is completely destroyed. There may be some hints as to what happened around the cracks in the bumper. Anyway, so we'll come back to that in a second. So what did you guys think? What happened to that car? Okay, what happened to the, the little Renault Capture that in, meant it ended up as a Category N? I think personally that it was owned by somebody who lived in the country and I think it's hit a deer, basically. Driving down the road, Bambi's popped out <laughs> hit the front which has pretty much decimated the headlight and wrecked the bonnet hopefully Bambi's okay but uh, who knows right so the Renault's a Cat N um, the Fiat was a Cat S what's the difference between the two now if you look at the official uh, designation Cat, N, Cat S is structural and Cat N is non-structural however it's not quite that simple. Um, if you look at channels on YouTube and you look on Copart and look at the kind of damage that you can see on these cars, sometimes a Cat N looks way worse than some Cat S's. As an example, that Fiat 500 that we did uh, needed a wing, it needed a bonnet, the bumper had gone. Yes, the slam panel was bent and the crash bar was bent, but all of those things were bolt-on pieces and none of it affected the actual structure of the car. None of that needed touching at all. We just unbolted the wing, bonnet, bumper, got some brand new second-hand parts uh, and a brand new second-hand slam panel radiator and all of that sort of stuff, bolted that on, fired it all back up, and we're good to go. This one, this is Cat N, and the damage is 
I would say comparable to the Fiat 500. It's a more modern car, which means there's probably more, um, you know, the car's worth more money, and so therefore you could spend more on the repair and still have it be viable. And so perhaps that's the reason that the assessor has decided that this, in this particular case, is a cat N. So you can make up your own mind on that. Anyway, so what's our plan for the Renault? Um, the plan for the Renault is to clean it up, obviously, to repair it and then to move it on to somebody who hopefully will love and enjoy it. So, yeah, let's have a look round. So the car comes with one key currently. I've got to get a second one cut and sorted. Um, but generally, it's in, it's in really good condition, to be honest. It's... Uh, it's got around 59,000 on the clock, which for 2017 is, yeah, is low to sort of low to average. There's some dirt around the place, which is, you know, mud and whatnot, which is what makes me think maybe it's been owned by somebody who lived in the country. Um, but generally looks pretty reasonable. Um, it's not too grotty in the back. You've got your first aid kit and warning triangle and all the rest of it. And um, unlike the Fiat, this one has a brand new spare wheel that doesn't ever appear to have been used. So, got the jack in there, got the towing eye. Uh, I've got that on the stand at the moment because it obviously was used to pull the car out, I think, potentially, because it was under the bonnet. Um, but yeah, so that all looks good. No damage at the back. Pop the bonnet. So I did wonder whether the um, somebody could work magic on the bonnet, but I will show you why that's not possible. Uh, as you can see, there's a split in the bonnet there, which means that's uh, that's not really reusable. Um, so I've got some parts on the way. And I'll show you some of the parts which have already arrived. Um, pretty much we've not done anything with it yet. I pulled some of the sharp bits of plastic out of there. But other than that, we've not done anything with it. Um, it's as is. Uh, but it looks good. It looks good under here, to be honest. Uh, this is your little 900cc three-cylinder engine. All looks fairly good there's no damage it's just quite a quite a reasonable distance between the radiator and the front of the car which is probably uh, maybe saved the rad um, you can see the crash bar in here again it's not been touched uh, you know the uh, deer deer do have a bit of weight to them but thankfully uh, it doesn't seem to have done too much damage to the inside. So, I think without further ado, I'll pass you over and uh, we'll, we'll get the car in the garage and um, get started. So, ordered some parts up, um, because obviously we're going to need some. It's a nice brand new, brand new headlight, uh, which is a, uh, about 160 quid for that, yeah, it's well, not too okay. bad. It is, uh, it is brand new, it doesn't come with any bulbs or anything else. Uh, I think hopefully we can sort that out. And, the other item that I managed to find, which is really good, 
was the uh, a wing. Oh, that's ace, isn't it? It's Used in colour. In colour. <laughs> really happy about that. Yeah. Um, I do have a couple of other bits on the way. Got a bumper and also got a bonnet. Neither of those are in colour, unfortunately. So the bumper is it's in colour, it's just not the right colour. <laughs> uh, which is not ideal, but there you go. And that brings me on to the next point, which is... Sorry. Right. Brings me on to the next point, which is I actually need a painter. So one of the things that we learned from uh, the Fiat 500 is that uh, Certainly I can't get a very good finish on a bumper or anything else for that matter with aerosol. So I can do, I can get the, the panels to the point where they're in primer. But I think certainly with a car that's this new and, you know, worth a reasonable amount of money, I think that, you know, it's definitely worth spending the money on getting it painted professionally. Okay, so... Um, I don't know if anybody knows of a decent painter in this sort of area. We're in uh, sort of Warwickshire and Eaton area and um, could really do with a decent painter that's uh, going to do a really nice job for not too much money, no, reasonable money. So uh, if you do, do know somebody who's reliable and uh, does a good job, let me know in the comments below. Okay, so I've got some trim clips. I bought some tools for that. Trim clip there. And a Torx. Okay, cool. Bumper off, got to get there. Arch liners out both sides. Looks good.
Friday. So that's the inner arch liner out on this side. We now need to do the same on the other side so we can get the bumper off. Talks across the front here. Oh, the old bonnet release, I need to get that out. Push your thing, just ease it round. There you go, it's out of the little thing. Pull it out of there as well. And then this can come off. It's only a very, very short bonnet release, like catch release. And then, um, sorry, you can see, yeah. So then this all comes free, hopefully. So this is one of those jobbies that pushes itself out. If you just try and get under there, then you'll break it. But if you split it, get in the middle, pull it out, 
then you can pull it out and this bit will squeeze in and you'll be good. So that's all free. That's all free. Alright, I don't know if you can see what you're doing because I can. I think we're here. That one, that one, that one. I think. I bet we'll have to re rivet that when the new, when the brand new second hand one comes. Because I bet they've removed it. So let's get it off first and have a look. Oh, we don't need a 10 mil. Happy days. Is that all coming off as one bit? Still feels a bit solid, doesn't it? Must have missed something, I think. Ah. Oh. Alts. Two seconds, I need to show you with the other camera. There's a bolt there, which is bolted on. And then your wing probably comes away, I think. Let's give that a go. Okay, that's waving around in the wind. That, and that's all part of the bumper. Good. What do we got then? All good, I think. Crash bar is intact. Yeah, it is just panel damage. So legit cat N. All right, I think probably that bit there. That's probably going to need bending back, I think. In comparison with the other side, you can't really see it because of the headlight. But um, yeah, that's a bit, bit bent. Cool. Let's crack on. Here's your bumper on the inside. Waiting for the new one to turn up from the re reclamation yard, scrap yard breakers, whatever you want to call it, wreckers if you're in Oz. Don't do the accent. Right, um, yeah, so loads of stuff to take off there. And uh, hopefully most of it has pulled away from the bumper because obviously we're getting a bumper. All right, so that is it for this one. Uh, we have the car up on the ramp, bumper off, ready to go. And uh, I need to strip down the bumper, take all the bits that we need uh, away, ready to put onto the new bumper. Um, you may see that in the next video. I may do that off camera because it's just me undoing a load of bolts, taking bits off. Uh, I'm going to take some photos so I understand where everything goes. That makes sense. Um, but for the time being, if you have been, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to see what a Cat S looks like, there's a video I did on a Fiat 500 up here, which just goes to show you how little damage a Category S or structural can actually have. And I'll catch you on the next one. See you later. Bye.